What's up guys, Sagi here, and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today I'm gonna to tell you why the Skydio 2 is not a perfect drone, why I use it more than all my other drones combined. I'll tell you about some accessories that I think every user will find useful. We'll talk about some really exciting new developments with a recent firmware update. And then I'm curious to know if this is a drone that you would use. If you're watching this video, you're probably considering buying this drone, or maybe you're just curious to see what all the hype is about. Now, I've been waiting for the Skydio 2 ever since it was announced. I've had it for a couple of weeks now so I can share my experience with you. I'll tell you all about this newer version and then also compare it to the Skydio R1 and the Mavic Pro Platinum. We'll take a look at some sample footage and finally I'll give you my opinion about who I think this drone would work for. I have this video broken down into chapters with timestamps in the description so you can skip around if there's a particular topic that you're interested in. Of course, if you're seriously considering investing in this drone, I'd recommend that you watch the review all the way through so that you can make an informed decision. If you're already familiar with the Skydio brand, then you have an idea of what makes this drone different. There's really no debate that Skydio has the most advanced obstacle avoidance capabilities in the drone market, and it's really not even close. If you watched my R1 review, which was the first model that Skydio released, then you already saw how impressed I was with that system. In wide open spaces, it was easily able to track and follow a subject, and even in densely wooded environments, the R1 dodged trees and branches and it was able to follow me. But even though the obstacle avoidance and tracking were ridiculously good, and I was able to get shots that I couldn't get any other way, I still saw some opportunities for improvement. It was kind of big, it was expensive, and it had some limitations in terms of range and control options. And then when I heard the Skydio 2 was coming, I knew I wanted one. I have other drones, both large and small, and they're great for what I'm doing a job and I'm trying to get very specific shots while manually controlling the drone and the camera. But for what I do most of the time for this channel where I film videos alone, I wanted a tool that I can easily integrate into my workflow. So let's take a deeper look into the Skydio 2 and you can expect to see some follow-up videos about it and more footage from this drone in my future videos. So the first thing I wanna talk about is autonomous flying. There's simply no other drone that can accomplish what this drone can in terms of autonomous flying and tracking. Instead of the 12 720p cameras that we saw in the R1, the Skydio 2 uses six 4K cameras, each with a 200 degree field of view lens to create a 3D model of the world. And it uses these six overlapping feeds to be able to navigate, avoid obstacles, and predict where the subject is going. You'll notice that the rear props are facing up and the front ones are facing down. And that's so that the three cameras on top and the three cameras on the bottom have an unobstructed view to be able to create a complete 360 degree model. Now each camera also has this little notch next to it to protect it from being damaged or scratched. You should treat these cameras with the same level of care that you would the main camera and make sure that they're clean before you fly. Now the tracking and obstacle avoidance is even more ridiculous with this drone than with the R1. Instead of the stereo pairs of cameras that the R1 used, which combined for three megapixels of visual sensing, the Skydio 2 now has 45 megapixels of data, so clearly another leap forward. They also upgraded from the NVIDIA TX1 to the TX2 chip, which allowed for a much more advanced algorithm. I flew the Skydio 2 in some pretty open spaces, but then I also pushed it into areas that were beyond the recommendation, just to see what it can do. So while I don't recommend that you do some of the things that you see in this video, it was important to me to show you just how advanced the AI in this drone is. And it's funny to say, but you can almost see it thinking and trying to figure out how to make it through some super challenging environments. Something else that I noticed about the Skydio 2, but I can't really quantify, is that it seems to be better than the R1 when it's predicting or anticipating movement. And I don't know if this has anything to do with the additional visual sensing data, the upgraded chip, or the new three axis gimbal instead of the two axis one that we saw in the R1. But it feels like it's predicting my next movement better and it's better able to keep me framed properly. Now one limitation of the Skydio 2 is low light flying. Since the drone uses the six cameras for navigation and obstacle avoidance, it needs to be able to see. And since the system can't be turned off, the drone simply won't take off when there isn't enough light. And I've seen some users say, why can't I just turn this feature off and then fly the drone like I would any other drone using the controller, which 
I'll get to in a minute. And I think this is a legitimate question, and I don't know the answer, but my guess is the Skydio's MO has always been that the drone shouldn't crash. That's their priority. And if you fly within their guidelines, they have a pretty serious warranty where they'll fix it for free if it crashes. And at the same time, I can see a user saying, look, I accept that responsibility, and I know that it will void the warranty, but I wanna get this shot, and if I crash, I'll pay for it. But as it stands, if you want a drone that you can fly at night, this is not the drone for you. For what I do, I almost never fly at night, so this isn't a deterrent. I can still get the sunrise and sunset shots with the Skydio 2, I just can't fly it when it's super dark out. And that's good enough for what I do like 99% of the time. Before I move on to the next section, if you like what you've seen so far, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content you guys like so that I can make more of it. And if it's your first time here, go ahead and hit the subscribe and notification buttons to stay up to date on all the latest gear and tutorials. Next, I wanna talk about the camera and the image quality. Now, one area where I wanted to see improvements coming from the R1 is the camera. I felt like the R1 was more of a proof of concept, and I knew once they saw the response, they were gonna cause some serious ripples in the drone world. I remember people saying to me that my R1 footage was good when there was plenty of light, but not that great in lower light situations. And they were asking me why I was so excited about it. And my response was, first of all, the R1 can already do what no other drone can do. But I told them that I wasn't just excited about this drone, I was excited about the next one because the camera sensor is the easy part. There are plenty of good sensors to choose from on the market, and those are available to essentially every drone company. But the obstacle avoidance and guidance technology on the R1 and now the Skydio 2 is unmatched. The new camera on the Skydio 2 has a 20 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view and an aperture of 2.8. It gives us 4K 60 in standard or HDR versus 4K 30 standard on the R1. We also get 1080p at up to 120 frames per second versus 60 frames per second on the R1. And I was very impressed with the image quality in terms of sharpness, dynamic range, and color rendering. The Skydio reports 13 stops of dynamic range, which is very good, and I felt like I could use the footage right out of the camera or I could do some color grading in post if I wanted to. I really wish Skydio had included a flat color profile, even if it wasn't a log, but just something like neutral on Canon so that we'd get a softer, less contrasty, and less saturated footage to start with. That would have been really cool. And who knows, maybe that's something they can add with a firmware update. Finally, even though it's not something that I do a lot of, you can also shoot 12 megapixel stills in both JPEG and RAW, and again, the image quality is quite good. Next, if you use the R1, you'll notice that the gimbal on the Skydio is improved. We now have a three axis gimbal instead of the two axis that we saw in the older model. So the R1 did not rotate on the yaw axis, which is used for panning. This wasn't a big deal because the R1 could account for that by rotating the body, but the new gimbal is more versatile and now it can pan left to right to more effectively track a subject and keep it in frame. Okay, so moving on, the next thing I wanna talk about is portability. And one point of friction that I had with the R1 was its size. Neither drone can be folded, but the R1 was 13 by 16 inches, and the Skydio 2 is 8.8 .8 by 10.7 inches, so it's significantly smaller. It's about the size of my Mavic Pro Platinum when extended. Now, of course, the Mavic Pro can be folded and you can get a much more compact and easy to transport configuration. This was more of an issue for me with the R1 because the case just didn't fit in most of my bags. The Skydio 2 has a much smaller hard shell case, which comes with a shoulder strap and it fits the drone, spare propellers, charging cable, and then either two batteries or one battery and the wall charger. Also, because it's smaller, I can get that case in most of my bags or sometimes I just clip it to the outside of the bag. Now, as far as weight, the Skydio 2 is of course lighter at 1.7 pounds instead of 2.2 on the R1. And naturally, I'm always happy to get gear that weighs less, although my last camera purchase would suggest otherwise. Okay, so next I wanna talk about performance and battery life. In terms of speed, we're looking at fully autonomous flight at up to 36 miles per hour, which for the types of shots that I'm using it for is plenty. It's also a significant improvement from the 25 miles an hour we saw in the R1. Another advantage is that the Skydio 2 is a lot quieter than the R1. I haven't tested the actual noise levels, but it is noticeable. Now, as far as actual flight, we've already discussed the obstacle avoidance and tracking, which in general is spectacular. There is an important option for height floor in the app, which changes the behavior of the Skydio 2. So if you have it enabled, it will stay at least eight feet above the ground while tracking a subject. So it's a safer way to flight. 
Now the downside is that the drone won't go under low obstacle, so it may have to fly over a branch or a tree when it's following you instead of under. Now if you disable the height floor, then it can fly close to the ground and has better tracking in more challenging environments. But you need to be more mindful of your surroundings. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the battery. So each battery is rated for 23 minutes of flight time versus 16 minutes on the R1. It's summer here and it's pretty hot and I'm getting about 20 minutes of flight time from each battery. I'm also pretty careful about the battery life, so I don't like to push it into single digits if I can avoid it. You just never know what you might run into and it's always a good idea to play it safe. And the battery must be charged in the drone using the provided USB cable. So if you have two batteries, you'll need to take the one out and put the next one in in order to charge it. And of course you can charge it while you're flying. Now, if you get multiple batteries, which I highly recommend, you should also pick up a dual charger. And this lets you charge two batteries with one USB-C cable. And it also has a USB-C pass-through so you can charge another device like your phone, the controller or the beacon, which I'll get to in the next section. Now, in my case, I have four batteries, so I have two fully charged batteries in the case, plus two more attached to the charger. And when I finish using one of the batteries in the drone, I put the used one on the charger, and then I have it plugged into my power bank that's in my bag. I use the Anchor Power Core, which is awesome, and this way I'm charging my batteries even when I'm on the go. All right, now I wanna talk about two things that I was really excited to try out the controller and the beacon. Now there are two limitations with the R1 that I could see would be immediate deal breakers for some people. First, there was no controller for manual flight control. And second, the range was limited by the phone's Wi-Fi. You can use the app to fly the drone if you needed to using the on-screen controls, but it wasn't great. You could use it to get the drone out of trouble and then back to a safer area or to position it for landing, but you couldn't get any cinematic shots with it because the controls are clunky and again, the range was very limited. So Skydia solved both of these issues with two optional components. The first is the controller and the second is called the beacon. The controller is borrowed from Parrot and it's a Sky Controller 3 which was used with the Anafi. It's a medium sized controller, it's pretty comfortable to hold and overall I like the ergonomics on this controller more than my Mavic Pro controller, but not as much as the Mavic Air 2 controller. And of course, this is a personal preference, but I'm just sharing my experience. You activate it by just flipping the phone holder up, and I found that it does fit my iPhone XS with my spec case on it, but it was important that I first put the top of the phone against the holder and then slide the bottom into place for the best grip. It didn't feel like the most secure hold, but my phone never came out of it. Still, I would probably want a little better grip. I did like how much easier it was to plug my phone in than it is with my Mavic Pro controller where you have to get that lightning cable through that little tiny thing on the side. As far as range, the controller is rated for 3.5 kilometers or 2.17 miles versus twice that on my Mavic Pro Platinum. For how I fly, that's not a big difference because I don't usually have the drone that far away from me. But if you do like to fly your drone at greater distances, that's something that you'll wanna keep in mind. Now, I also noticed that the feed on the controller is not as consistent or as reliable as with my Mavic Pro Platinum, even at pretty short distances. Now, that was until I actually read the instructions which tell you to turn your Wi-Fi off on the phone when flying with the controller and that made a huge difference. So if you fly using the controller, turn off your phone's Wi-Fi while you're flying. Having the controller means that I not only need to bring one drone with me because I can let the Skydio 2 fly autonomously when I want tracking, and when I want more control or wanna get a specific shot, I now have that option. And the controller is not as precise as what I have with my Mavic Pro, and every once in a while there seems to be a very slight lag in responsiveness, but it does have a huge advantage. If you're flying manually, you're still getting complete obstacle avoidance. Up, down, left, right, front, back, it doesn't matter. It just won't fly into objects. The other day I was flying in between some trees and someone walked up to me saying, wow, you're amazing. Like I would have definitely crashed my drone. I had to tell them that I was actually aiming at the trunks of the trees and I was trying to crash and the drone was avoiding them on its own. So what's cool is that there are times when I want something in the foreground to be fairly close to the drone to show movement. 
but I don't want to risk hitting it. So with my other drones, I wouldn't attempt some of these shots, but now I know that worst case scenario, the Skydio 2 will simply stop if it doesn't think it can make it through. Okay, so that was the first issue, being able to fly using the controller. And the next issue had to do with the range of the phone's Wi-Fi. With the R1, if you were separated from the drone to a distance that was beyond your phone's Wi-Fi, it would be stuck and you'd have to go back to it until you got close enough to control it. With the Skydio 2, we have a new optional access called the beacon which is this little handheld gizmo that wirelessly connects to the drone and then extends the range up to 1.5 kilometers or 0.93 miles. And you can basically control the drone using the beacon instead of having to mess with your phone. And I find it much more comfortable to use the beacon and I like that the controls are tactile so I don't have to look down like when I use the app. If I want it closer, I just hit the minus button. I want it farther away, I hit the plus button. If I wanna change the position of the drone around me, I can just use the left and right arrows. And if I wanna initiate a droney, I can just double click on the Skydio logo. Another cool feature is this drag and drop control. So if the drone is in front of me, but I want it a little bit higher, or I just wanna move it to another angle, I can just point the beacon at the Skydio 2 and then hold down the Skydio logo button. And then while I'm holding it down, I just point it anywhere else in the sky and the drone will fly there. And then I let go and continue to move. So it's really like dragging and dropping with a mouse. And maybe the most important feature of the beacon is that it enables GPS tracking. So if the Skydio 2 loses visual contact with the subject, like let's say I'm riding under a tree, now the drone will use the GPS and the beacon to continue to track its position until it can regain visual contact with me. And that prevents the issue that I was describing before where you'll be out of range of your phone's Wi-Fi because now the Skydio 2 is communicating directly with the beacon. So basically you wirelessly connect the beacon to the drone and then your phone to the beacon. And I wanted to mention that some of the really exciting improvements in the latest firmware update have to do with the beacon and I'll get to those later on in the video. Next, I wanna talk about the app, which I really like. It's a very simple interface and there's basically no learning curve. It's really straightforward. It's not as sophisticated as something like what you get with the DJI drones, but for what I use this drone for, I don't really need it to be. I'm able to launch, land, position the drone where I want, and then select the subject for tracking. I can also select skills, which are things like motion track, which will have the drone identify and then track a subject and then you can select one of eight positions around the subject. So you can have it follow you from behind or lead you from the front. You can have it on either side of you or at four different 45 degree angles. And in this mode, as you change directions, the drone responds to that change and then moves accordingly. And this is where that predictive quality that I mentioned earlier is important because if the drone can make an educated guess regarding where you might go next, it can frame that shot better. Another option is that I can select fixed track, which will always film you from the same angle, regardless of the direction of your movement. We also have something called orbit, where the Skydio 2 will fly around you in circle and track you even while you're moving. And then again, you can dictate the height and the distance. Cable will fly between any two predetermined points, and then hover will stay in place while reframing the shot to track the subject. Now there are some other options called one shots, which include a droney, rocket, boomerang, and vortex. And like I said, it's super easy to initiate and control each of these using the app. Okay, so now that we covered the Skydio 2 in detail, let's look at this new firmware update. And I love seeing a company continue to improve a product through these types of updates, rather than holding on to all new features for like the next model. I'll quickly go over the new features and then let's talk about who this drone is right for. So the first improvement has to do with extended tracking range. When using the phone only, we're now getting double the range. So going from 33 to 65 feet or 10 meters to 20 meters. When using the beacon, tracking distance now increases to 130 feet or 40 meters. Now next we have some added functionality where we can initiate orbit from the beacon and use GPS for long range orbits. You can also change the speed and direction of the orbit from the beacon using that drag and drop functionality that we talked about. Now Skydio also enabled GPS for the hover skills so that the Skydio 2 can locate the subject even if it can't see it. And again, you can drag and drop in hover mode. Now next, subject selection was made easier by tapping the Skydio button with the subject standing in front of the camera. And because it has GPS, if it starts tracking the wrong person, it's going to realize that that person is not holding the 
beacon. Skydio also improved some landing specific behavior. So first there's case landing. So the Skydio 2 will automatically detect and then land on the case by recognizing the logo. So basically you pilot the drone over the case, you tilt the camera down to see the logo and you'll see in the app that the drone recognizes the case and it will automatically land on it. Now another addition has to do with nudging the drone during landing. So if you feel like it's landing in an unsafe area, you can use the joysticks in the app or the controller to move it to a better spot. You'll also see that during landing, obstacle avoidance is turned off because you'll see the LEDs turn from blue to yellow. That way you know not to reach for the drone while the LEDs are still blue. All right, so this was my first video about the Skydio 2 and I shared with you the things that I liked about it and some opportunities for improvement. And like I said in the beginning, this drone isn't perfect for everyone. Neither is any other drone on the market. So let's talk about why I choose to use this one and who I think this drone would work for. If you wanna capture any kind of outdoor sports or activity, the Skydio 2 is a no-brainer. I wouldn't even really consider another drone at this point. The fact that you can hand launch and land in the mountains and have it follow you while you're skiing, snowboarding, mountain biking, or any other similar activity is just ridiculous. There just isn't anything else on the market that can get you the type of footage that the Skydio 2 can. Period. End of story. With the R1, I felt like I was compromising on image quality, but that's definitely no longer the case because I love the 4K 60 footage I get from the Skydio 2. With the R1, I also felt like I was really limited in terms of manual flight. So if I got to a location and wanted a few establishing cinematic shots, there was really no way for me to do that. With the Skydio 2, I can just grab the controller get those shots that I want with the added benefit of incredible obstacle avoidance, and then put the controller away and start using the tracking capabilities. All right, so now let's talk about who this drone is not for. If you want a drone to primarily fly manually, if you plan on flying your drone at night, or if you plan on flying your drone where it's miles away from you, then I would tell you that there are some other options that would be a better fit for you and they will still have some rudimentary tracking and obstacle avoidance. I wanted a drone that can essentially act as a second shooter for me to help me capture B-roll for the type of content that I create. I wanted to make sure that I can trust it not to crash and I still wanted the flexibility to manually get specific shots. So like I said, now that I have the beacon and the controller, I feel like I can take one drone with me and all my needs are covered. And I do wanna emphasize that I really underestimated how much I would like the 360 degree obstacle avoidance when using the controller. Now when I'm trying to get a certain shot, let's say a parallax shot. So I'm essentially doing a slide and panning at the same time. All I have to do is concentrate on my framing. If I get too close to a tree or a structure or anything else, I know that the Skydio 2 will stop on its own. It might mean that I have to try that shot again, but I never worry about it crashing and that's hugely valuable to me. Okay, so now I wanna know what you think. Is this a drone that you'd consider getting and then why or why not? And if you have any questions or topics that you want me to cover in a follow-up video, let me know in the comment section. I'll put links in the description to where you can buy the Skydio 2 as well as the accessories that I mentioned in this video. And I really hope I was able to give you a good overview of the Skydio 2. If I did, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up Tweet it, share it, and if you haven't yet, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon. I can just point the beak and it's really cool. <laughs> cool. And in this mode, as you change directions, the drone, the dome, the dome. Still, I probably would want a little belt. <laughs> it did. <laughs> I would want a little bit of bit of boo boo. If you're already familiar with the Skydio brand, then <clears throat> if you're <clears throat> really, that's what we're doing. For what I do, I blah 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 blah. For what I do, for what I do, what is it that I do? I keep saying that this is what I do, but what do I do? And the Skydio 2 is t eight, and the Skydio, <laughs> the Skydio.